Joy News Prime. From Panofa Street here in Accra, this is Joy News Prime, your most comprehensive two hours of news on television in Ghana. Over the next two hours, we'll bring you the biggest headlines of the day, as well as business, sports, entertainment, our interactive segment and international news. In this edition, one confirmed dead in an illegal mine pit collapse that is feared could have a lot more people buried would be in Takla for the very latest on rescue efforts. Police site intelligence, it says, points to series of coordinated attacks across the country to convince courts to stop planned demonstration by Let My Vote Count Alliance to push for the compilation of a new voters register. The MPP has meanwhile produced further evidence to back its call for a new register. Scores of people displaced in Bogatanga following chieftaincy clash there would go over live for the very latest from the weekend balance. And in business with me, Abigail Adamakwenshi, the Ghanaian economy Ketsi figures released by the Ghana Statistical Service will be worth 140 billion cities. But what difference will it make to you? We'll tell you. Stay tuned. So from Nairobi with love, Abigail will be here with all the business details in about 30 minutes. And an Accra taxi driver has taken on the responsibility to stop indiscriminate littering of the city by telling offenders to pick up any litter they drop. And he doesn't mind the insults rained on him. My name is Israel Lai and this bulletin is also available across Europe on ABN television. Stay tuned. In our very first story, one person has reportedly been killed after an illegal gold mine collapse in Takwa in Swam in the western region. Several others are said to be trapped in the pit and rescue operations were launched earlier in a bit to get them out. Let's get onto the phone lines now and speak with our correspondent Kweku Ousu Pepra for the very latest. Good evening to you, Kweku. Good evening. All right. So what can you tell us about this uh, mine pit collapse and the latest updates on casualty numbers? Yes, police finally got to the scene and they were able to, with the community members, retrieve three bodies and two were confirmed injured and one person is dead. Um, earlier we had all sort of information filtering through with some putting it at six, others saying eight and five. But now from the police source, we have um, um, the municipal police commander saying that only one person has been has been found from the pit dead, and two have been um, are receiving treatment at the Taco Hospital for various uh, forms of injuries. We do not know how many people um, are trapped in the pit, as always the case that pertains with mine and galamse accidents. All right, but do we know how this accident happened? What we know for now is that these um, young men, women, and sometimes very young uh, boys were in the pit, shoveling and digging the soil for gold-bearing sand, and the the rocks caved in on them. Usually, they when they dig and go beneath the rocks, and they do not support it with stronger. Um, wooden plank, the rocks will cave in, fall on them, and sometimes it consume as many people that it can cut. Okay, I'd want to find out how about the people who you say are receiving treatment in hospital? Are they able to speak to the issue to tell us how many of them were there in the pit? For now, they have not spoken. Um, they are receiving treatment at the hospital, and they have not said to us how many um, were dead. And usually it happens that they are not able to tell because they, the pits are big and it covers wider areas. And so when it caves in, you may not, they may not readily know until they are sent back to the site to see where they were and which part caved in. And then they can be able to say there were four gangs and every gang is made up of, say, eight people or there were five gangs working within this area. And so if this area is the part that caved in, then they can do the mathematics and estimate how many people were within that specific uh, confinement. Do we know, Kweku, if uh, rescue efforts are ongoing? 
Yeah, they are still ongoing. There are community men there. There are some NADMO officials there and police are there and they are doing it. The community people are the ones that are leading this at this moment because it is very far to reach and this is not one of those very advanced Galante sites where you have bigger excavators uh, and bigger earth moving machines. It's one of those uh, fleshing ones that they usually use the shovels and the sanfan machines with very few, um, about um, very some number of people, about 20, 100, between 20 to 100 people working within specific spots within the, con the concession. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, that was Kweku Owusu Prepa joining us from the Western region where we're told there's a mine pit, illegal mine pit collapse. One person has been confirmed that at least two people are in hospital receiving treatment from the Western region. We're moving to the Northern region where dozens of people have been displaced in Tamale after torrential rains in the regional capital. Regional correspondent Hashmin Mohammed joins me now over the telephone with details. Good evening to you, Hashmin. How bad is the situation in the Northern region? Well, the rainstorm that lasted for about an hour and a half this afternoon wrecked havoc to a lot of properties of residents of Pim Pim of Pilpela and then Kalarga. A while ago, I was at the committees to communities, and the residents tell me that they've lost their clothing, they've lost their foodstuffs, and then electrical appliances such as television sets and refrigerators. They are appealing to city authorities in the Tamil metropolis to construct storm drains around the communities. They say they've had their chiefs, their assembly man, all are joining in appeals to the Tamil Metropolitan Assembly to attend to this their plight. But uh, since but it appears the authorities are not responding to their appeals. All right, uh, thank you very much. Uh, but do we know what uh, NADMO is doing to help these people who have been affected? Well, as at the time of leaving these two communities, NADMO officials were yet to visit the affected People. I want to believe that they will be doing that sometime tomorrow. All right, thank you very much, Hashmin Mohammed, joining us from Tamale in the northern region. Uh, the Volta Lake is arguably one of the biggest water bodies in Ghana and beyond. It is a tourist destination many visit annually. Join news, news editor Martha Krenselakwa visited this cherry end of the lake and reports something else aside fishing is happening on the lake. Let's get to know more. As a first-timer to the Asuchari end of the Volta Lake, seeing a man dive into the lake and surfacing with a bucket did not look strange from a distance. I thought it was a fishing expedition, especially because it was happening near a fish farm in sight. But after getting closer, I saw something else. We know the Volta Lake to be full of fish, but what we didn't know is that it's also a place for sand winning. Now I am learning for the first time that there are natives here who actually win sand from this lake. And some of them are getting fine sand, others are getting black sand, and others are also getting sand that you can use for mortar for building without using chippings. And so I am joining them here to find out more about that. Let's get more detail from what they are doing here. According to the natives, they have learned by experience where to go for which kind of sand. We have a shortage of sands. Okay. Uh, we have smooth. Okay. We have rock sand, pebbles, gravel, and the black sand. Where do you get what? How do you know where to get what? Our uncles have won it about 15 years ago. Okay. So they got to know where exactly the type of sand that you need is located. It is an arduous task to win sand in the lake. But of more concern is how these activities can harm the lake. Not far from the site where I found these men, was a sand winning company using heavy equipment to win sand in the lake. I did not get the opportunity to speak to operators because they were unavailable. The activity provides job avenue for many youths in the area, but there are risks involved, and 20-year-old Charlotte Kwajo shares her story with me. How many pans are you carrying? Mm, 
be uh, 20. 20. Mm. So by the close of day, you know, a normal day, how much will you get? Maybe a uh, five city or uh, yeah, you get something, but don't you feel pain in your neck? It's so much. Mm. Yeah, I'm coming. Let me have your hand. You let's go. Tell me, I'll go with you. Uh, how much? How do you feel pain? Do you have to take painkiller by the time you close your I head? Or go? Uh, my head or my body. Though the sand winners are sure their activities don't affect the lake in any way, I am sure the Environmental Protection Agency and other allied institutions must move fast. When did you start work? What time? Four, five, four thirty. Four thirty, and you've done seven boats. So if you go inside like that, I'm afraid. Else I'll go with you. If you go inside, how many minutes will you spend to get one boat and come back? Uh, 10 minutes or to fetch and come back uh, anyway seeing a sand winning company operating in the full glare of the public may just confirm that it is safe to win sand from the lake Martha Krenzalakwa reporting for Joy News okay. Asuchari now scores of people in the Bogatanga suburb of Atubabi Sea in the Upper East region have been displaced only a violent chief since he clashed there last night. Police say seven people are receiving treatment at the Bogotanga Hospital after sustaining various degrees of gunshot and machete wounds. My onion pot, my deep freezer, so many things. So many things was inside the room. If it were not because of this, my daughter, I wouldn't have even achieved anything. All these things would have been banned. Because when it happened, the issue happened, we didn't even know anything. We just uh, saw them throwing stones, throwing stones, just saying that the, 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 the woman and the children are inside that room. They shouldn't leave us. So we're able to manage and escape. I'm a widow. Two, 23 good years that my husband died. And this apartment is for my senior husband. So because of that, he gave me that apartment to be there with the little kids. So all my trust in only God. It's only God who will solve my problem. Right up, East Coast, when you bit sorry, joins us on the phone line now with the very latest from the area. Good evening to you, Albert. What can you report as to the very latest? Well, Israel, the Regional Security Council, uh, led by the Deputy Upper East Regional Minister, Daniel Syme, uh, together with the municipal uh, NADMO officials, this evening uh, visited the area to try and assess the damage caused and to see um, <clears throat> how many people were affected so they can uh, get some relief items to help them. Uh, so that, that is the latest. Um, the Deputy Minister assured that um, once they have assessed the area, they will be able to get some relief items which they will uh, fairly distribute to the affected victims. Now, he's also been calling on the uh, factions in the chieftaincy dispute at Atumba BC to remain calm, uh, you know, and to make sure that uh, they don't continue with the violent attacks so that uh, the dispute that is between them is fairly resolved uh, in due course. All right, Albert, we're also told that uh, seven people are receiving treatment at the hospital. Do we know their condition now, whether they've been discharged or it's gotten serious? Yes, they are still in hospital. Um, a lot of them, you know, uh, had very serious injuries. Uh, this morning, my sources at the hospital uh, told me that they had to operate, uh, you know, perform surgery on treatment. We've lost the abbot briefly. After the, the right. shooting, uh, two more people were expected to um, go through surgery today. Uh, these people were also... Um, you know, visited by the deputy minister, and he's assured that uh, they they will do what they can to support the victims who are in hospital. So, uh, these seven victims are still in hospital receiving treatment. None of them has been discharged yet. All right. Thank you very much, Albert. Sorry, joining us from the Upper East Region. Unfortunately, we're not done sharing uh, bad news with you. Two people are receiving treatment in hospital after chief sensitive clashes in Commander in the Central Region. Police are yet to make any public pronouncement on the incident, but our correspondent Richard Kujunyakun has been monitoring events in the town and joins us now on the phone. Good evening to you, Richard. Has there been any development since the shooting occurred?
Well, um, the development is that the police uh, have gone in to ensure that uh, calm has been restored, but they have not confirmed to us that there has been any arrests that have been made, but they have declined comment on the matter. I have, I have tried relentlessly to speak with the police on the moves to apprehend those who brought about the mayhem and the chaos, but the police uh, have declined comment on the matter. What can you tell us about those who were injured? Well, those who are injured are currently receiving some treatment. The medical officials at the Cape Coast Teaching Hospital are operating on them. They told me this afternoon that they have commenced operation on them. Uh, yesterday, uh, the bullets uh, were still in the heads and the next of these uh, victims and they were uh, languishing on their beds at the Cape Coast Teaching Hospital. Their relatives and families were there in their numbers to lend their support. But what they tell me was that uh, the incident was nasty because these two persons that were affected were not part of the people who were embroiled in uh, this confusion, but they were playing uh, a football game somewhere. And so it's a case of a stray bullet that hit the two of them. And so that is why, because of the necessity of the situation, they carried their relatives to uh, the Cape Coast Station Hospital, even before they could even hint the police about that. All right, thank you very much, Richard Kojo Nyako. You're watching Join News Prime. We're taking a break. But we'll be back with more stories. Please don't go. You're watching Join News Prime. Thank you very much for staying with us. There's uncertainty over plans by the Let My Vote Counter Alliance pressure group to stage a second demonstration to demand the compilation of a new voters register. This is because of a continuing legal tussle between the group and police over plans by the demonstrators to pick it at the head office of the Electoral Commission. Earlier today, the group was in court to challenge an ex-party injunction secured by the police, restraining them from picketing at the EC and was given the all clear Except the police were back in court a few hours later to obtain yet another injunction. Join News Kwachi Afrenyama has been monitoring the back and forth and now joins me in the studio with some details. So I guess the, the big question is, is this demonstration going to come on tomorrow? Well, from what we are hearing from the leadership of the Let My Vote Count Alliance, and the other groups who are part of this uh, pushing the agenda for the review of the voters register is unlikely they will pick it what they what we are learning now is that they would rather hold a press conference to make their views clear on how events have unfolded but it's, it's pretty interesting <coughs> circles of events yeah look, I mean, look, looking at what happened and and th this has been it that first th that particular protest days ago that that led to you know there were brutalities and all that okay. on that particular day the police had secured an injunction this was a day to the demonstration now this time around last week that, that was around uh, Wednesday the police secured another injunction restraining the protesters from picketing on the second one no from picketing okay. at the electoral commission this time around the leadership of led my vote count alliance and the other group got to know of it days ahead not not a day before so they had all the the, all the opportunity to to counter to, it, to counter to it and so they'd be meeting their lawyers and that's why they they went to court today a day to the the intended protest and this time around they had the, the court <coughs> at, at ruling in their favor overturning the ACs the, the the police decision the police earlier uh, order the restraining order the police secured restraining okay. them from so going this to one happened this bit you're talking about happened in one circuit court in one circuit court and then we're told that the police goes to another circuit court after the proceedings mm -hmm. to go and secure the second one in, in and that, that's the, that's the interesting bit this time round, the police did not go seeking the same reliefs that they had sought earlier restrain them from picketing at and the electoral easy. commission this time around what they said was that the protest should not come off at all at all and the reasons they cite pretty interesting israel a number of them here they say for example and these are based on essentially intelligence that they, they pick for uh, instance they say that there has been an intelligence source that suspected hardened criminals had planned to attack rob and cause panic 
within Accra and other regions, and that they intend to attack policemen on essential duty points, similar to the incident that happened in Ho a, a few days ago, where a police constable was shot and killed by some unidentified armed men. So reasons they 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 put before the the presiding judge to convince it. Again, they talk about the fact that there's intelligence-led mapping up operation against some criminal dens within Accra and other regions from the 25th to 30th of September 2015 to arrest criminals. Now, they also cite the chieftaincy dispute in the Upper East Region, Bulga, that we, we talked about earlier. And they say that policemen have been deployed to that area. Now, looking at all these factors, the police say that they will have a weak force if indeed the protest should come off and they are supposed to, you know, send men to offer security and all that. The Greater Accra, the Accra Regional Police Command will have a weakened, you know, uh, police, will have weakened police personnel on right. the ground. Do, do we know if uh, whatever the latest action by the police has been served on the Let My Vote Counter Lines? Well, the, the last time, and this was uh, an, about an hour ago, I spoke to uh, Accra Regional, no, the National uh, Police PRO, uh, Superintendent Sefasata, he said that they not been able to serve uh, the leadership of Let okay. My Vote Count Alliance. And what they intend doing, pretty interesting, is that if they are unable to do that by close of day today, they will go as early, they'll go to the Obra spot, which is the main conversion point, as early as dawn tomorrow and cordon off the area. And wait for them. And wait for them. But the, it's, it's essentially to prevent them from converging there at, at all. The but should they, should they appear, should they come there tomorrow, <laughs> they'll serve them with this uh, okay. restraining order. Now, yep. <laughs>right so from nairobi with love abigail aduma Quinchi is here good evening to you abigail good evening, you've been away Andrew. for a while apparently you were in nairobi yeah enjoying nairobi oh well i was seeing some sights quite interesting i am um, nairobi let Mombasa, me try my Masai. little swahili karibu <laughs> What does it mean? Welcome. Oh wow, you yeah. learned something. Yes, too. I did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm impressed with the Karibu one. <laughs> you know? That's really impressive. All right, so what's <laughs> up? I'm hearing that what? At the end of the year, Ghana's economy will be worth what? 140 40 billion, billion cities. Cities. Right. Um So what? Yeah, so what? We are all asking <laughs> and we'll find out. Does, so it, what? does it mean that if now I'm, I'm you know, Am I going to get a share of that 140 billion? I mean, whatever extra is coming on, on top of it? Well, we are all wondering, but we'll give you details. Don't just go ahead of us. Okay. okay? All right. <laughs> all right. So, the National Petroleum Authority is assuring consumers of liquefied petroleum gas LPG that current shortage on the market will end by close of day. Consumers, especially those in the Tema metropolis, have had difficulties in getting the product over the past days. Some commercial drivers who use gas to fuel their vehicles say they have had to stop work for some days now because of the shortage. Here are some of them lamenting their plight to Joy Business. Hear that there's a gas available here. So I was I have a shortage for almost three days now. And I heard that there's, there's a gas around our domain side, so I decided to come and if, because of that I haven't been going to work. I've been in the house for almost three days now. So I came here to uh, free the gas so that if possible I can go to work tomorrow. How do you feel about this? Oh like because of that you, you'll be in the house uh, for nothing and you know the the cow now will be expecting his sis and there will be pressure on you and even if you have a child or even a wife there will be a lot of problem in the house so a uh, feel painful but by by his grace there's a a few guys so you are willing that you get some and maybe tomorrow you go to work so Anytime we used to shot gas sometimes to go, sometimes we get it. But now we shot by, three, uh, by one week ago now. So now we are so to get it. So we are, now we are going to around where we come here with them, we see some here. Go pack the car, don't work again. I'm harassing people, there's gas from place, then I go there, go for Yesterday, like this, I had that's Medina, I go Medina, that's more light, then I came back for house. So today we're here and here, then we can here again today. Then we used to get here. So 
Yeah. Uh, Lohe, it has affected me a lot. I mean, since last week, I haven't been able to work. And we don't know. It's like any time it's getting to December, we have this shortage. So we don't know where the problem is coming from. It's a prayer that the government do something about it because people are really suffering. We are really, really suffering. Because eh? there's no gas anywhere. Ah, I, cannot, I cannot do anything. There's nothing I can do. Because if there's no gas, we cannot work. Yeah. So since when last week did you realize that there has been no gas? Since roughly about two to three weeks ago. So that means that... You're watching Join News Prime and now on to the rest of our stories. The National Association of Graduate Teachers, NAGRAT, is demanding the payment of the outstanding allowances from government. Felix Akoyam has more. The National Association of Graduate Teachers maintains government has refused to pay the annual incremental allowance since the single spine salary structure was implemented. The group said all efforts to get government to pay the allowances owed them have failed. Greater Accra Regional Chairman of NAGRAT, Senor Kwame Koko, questioned the relevance of the National Labor Commission after it failed to enforce a directive for government to pay them. Since the implementation of the single spine salary policy in 2010, Government unilaterally stopped the payment of annual incremental credit to teachers. The teacher unions in the Ghana Green Service drew the attention of government to the anomaly and called for its restoration. In 2013, all teachers were placed on their correct salary skills, but the annual incremental credit areas for 2011 and 2012 were not paid. Nagrat also says some teachers who were recruited two years ago have not been paid. The government of the day does not respect this profession and we don't want to be lawless. Why, why do you think so? We don't want to be lawless people. We don't want to go and invade anybody's institution or anybody's house before our salaries have been paid. You understand? Because these issues are something, it's dehumaning. It's, I don't know how to, it's, it's very bad to see people work for several months and you don't pay them. They have to borrow from their relations or from their neighbors to take out to school. And when it, after four years, two years, three years, nothing to, to take home. How do you treat, treat people like that? Nagrat has given government up to Wednesday, September 30, to resolve their grievances or they will embark on a strike action. Now, at least 54 Nigerians are known to have died in Thursday's stampede during the Hajj pilgrimage near Mecca. That's according to Nigeria's National Hajj Commission. It was the deadliest incident to hit the Hajj in 25 years. At least 769 pilgrims died in the crash, more than 200 of whom are believed to be from Africa. The crash appears to have been caused when pilgrims converged at a junction in Mina near Mecca in Saudi Arabia on Thursday morning. The pilgrims were taking part in the Hajj's last major right throwing stones at pillars called jamarat where satan is believed to have tempted the prophet abraham a unit of guards that carried out a coup in burkina faso before handing back power is refusing to disarm the chief of army staff accused presidential guards of intimidating people carrying out the disarmament interim president michelle kafando has was formally reinstated on wednesday after an intervention from the army and several west african leaders on Friday, his government ordered the Presidential Guards unit that carried out the coup to be disbanded. The Presidential Guards, known as the RSP, are a unit of 1,200 well-armed and well-trained men loyal to Blaise Kampuare, the country's longtime ruler, who was ousted in a popular uprising which set alight the parliament building last year. A German court has sentenced two Rwandan rebel leaders for masterminding attacks on civilians in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Ignaz Muwanichaka and Strating Musoni were accused of ordering militias to commit mass murder and rape between 2008 and 2009. The trial took place under a law which allows the prosecution of foreigners for crimes committed, against, uh, committed outside Germany. 
It was hailed as a breakthrough in bringing Rwandan rebels to justice. Muwana Siaka, who is the leader of the Democratic Forces for the Liberation of Rwanda, was given a 13-year sentence while Musoni, his deputy, was sentenced to eight years. Musoni was released immediately because of the time he has already spent in custody. And that'll be all for International News. In other news, some districts in the northern part of the Volta region cannot access emergency health care. Many health facilities in those districts have no ambulances, and the deplorable nature of roads there makes it difficult for ambulances to even operate there. Manasa Azuria Winnie was at Ketekrachi over the weekend and reports on how an accident victim was left stranded in an ambulance for hours. Every minute counts in emergency health care delivery. Sometimes, the difference between a survivor and a casualty hinges on arrival at a health facility a minute late or a minute earlier. But for Mark Benson, it will take more than 50 hours to get to the 37 military hospital after he was referred from the Krachi District Hospital. Mark completed KJB Asato Senior High School this year and was writing the ongoing private candidates' exams in Kitekrachi when news came that his father was unconscious and was rushed to Nkwanta Hospital. Hospital and Arasa. When Arasa, I also have paper on Saturday again to write. So, and where you, if you come to my area, Damanku, it's only one car that you can get from that place up to Krachi. So when the, that was the, this um, Friday, I was given some medication to go and collect for my father. After which we have finished collecting the medication, the car has already gone. And I'll be having the people the next day. So I have to find an alternative to get the and write the paper. So there was no enemy apart from using the motorbike. At midday on Friday, he had to leave in Kwanta for Ketekrache to write social studies paper on Saturday morning. He had about 20 hours before the start of the paper and his journey on a good straight road would not take more than four hours. But the only way he could get to the center in time was on a motorbike. On his way to Ketekrache, Mark crashed with his motorbike and suffered a spinal injury, which could not be treated at the Krache West Government Hospital. When they arrived at the river bank on Sunday morning with a the patient, they had to wait for three hours before they could cross. We are to transport the patients who have an ROT three days ago to Accra, 37 of the military hospital for uh, further medical care to see a neurologist. But fortunately, we are here for almost two hours now. And the uh, two, or the ferry as we talk about, is not yet in. And it's an emergency case. And as it's an emergency, we're supposed to attend to us as early as possible. But as of now, we are still in the, in the, in the, in the line and it's not, up, it's not here yet. He said operators of the ferry do not attach any sense of urgency to emergency cases like ambulance services. But the captain of the Endeavour Jabka ferry denies these allegations. Whenever they are possible, those who come for the number, as soon as they reach and then they tell the patients, one certain call from wherever they are, they call. And then I'll look at the time they will arrive at the river bank and then I'll also mobilize and set them free. But they are making me aware that they told you yesterday that they will come very early in the morning. No, it's not true. They said they'll come in the night and I said, in the night, I don't have set light. I can't say in the night. They should come in the morning. Well, you didn't agree on the time. I didn't agree the time. Because my normal time is 8 o'clock. I even be glad to hear that hour early and call me at last time. 
The ferry finally crossed with the ambulance carrying the accident victim at 9 a.m. In all, it had been five hours since the ambulance carrying Mark set off from Kitakrachi and they had covered only about 30 kilometers of their journey of more than 300 kilometers to the 37 military hospital. For Joy News, Manasse Azore Arena reporting. All right, it's now time for entertainment, and uh, Miss G is here. Good evening to you, Miss G. Good evening, Israel. All right, so it's all about this celebrity wedding that was supposed definitely, to take place. Definitely, definitely. That took place over the weekend. It did. You were supposed to be there. You're yes. supposed to be my date. Oh, you didn't say that. You didn't tell everybody. If you had told everybody, maybe I would have showed up as your date. No, no, no. no. Like you, no, you're pulling a fast one on me. No, you didn't tell anybody that you wanted me as a date, you know. But again, the bride asked me, assigned me to do some job for her, and I couldn't refuse that as well. Oh, okay. So you were, when I you were on bride duties, exactly. So when I got to the wedding, everybody had left, but I was there. Yeah, yeah. You sent me that photo. I sent you photos to show that at least we two, I go some. You, you made it. You made it. <laughs> it was a beautiful wedding. It no was, you know. It. A lot of things happened. Yes, you were there, so you knew. And a people lot are talking about it, and there are all these gossips coming up. Mm -hmm. um, there's one of the gossips I like to ask you if you can confirm for me. Okay. But let's tell the story first. <laughs> <laughs> then my gossip will come later. Okay. So the wedding, like we said, the much talk about celebrated wedding came off, yes, over the weekend. And a lot happened. But first of all, it was a confirmation that the journey was definitely for a lifetime. A kiss. Did you see the case? Okay. So, over to you, Jolate. Did you see the case? Did you see the case? Okay. The, 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 those who said no have it. Aha! Aha! This one is heaven's kissing. Now, the last one, the third one, that was a proper kiss. So you saw the kiss finally? No, yeah. Finally, finally you the saw The first it. one I didn't see, the second one I didn't see, the third one I did see. I still didn't see the kiss anyway. Oh. Yes. So you want them to do another one mm. for you? Well, Privately you for us. Just for the two of us. Your fine babe and her fine man, you know. I, I'm not sure I want to be part I of this. I know. That's why I wanted just for the two of us. But you know that before this wedding, the much talk about song as well, released by Cartel Big J, titled Wedding. Yes. 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 And I actually, got, I actually got a CD. They auctioned the CD. Yeah. And uh, I, I bought one for myself. For how much? Uh, I'm not going to say. No, oh, but everybody knows how much you bought it for. Everybody knows. Everybody Who knows. Who knows? I know. How much? I'm not saying because you're not saying. Okay, so you don't know. I know. You don't. Dare me. I dare you. I forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, there was no better place for him to have had a live performance of the song than his wedding to Sally. Let's see it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So that's the it was, wedding it, song. It was a beautiful one. Mm. Pretty much like a fairy tale wedding. I mean, who what were would, you expecting? Yes. To have to have a wedding like that at Trasaco Valley. Uh -huh. It was really beautiful. The environment, the ambience and mm. everything. And you had the superstars showing up, the Including celebrities. Yourself, you know. Oh me, I'm just a journalist. I hear you had lots of fans, huh? Oh yeah? Uh, then the, the fans didn't come to oh, me. Oh, I hear you did enjoy yourself, you know. You're just lying to me that I wasn't there, so you didn't have fun, but I hear you had fun.
All right, it's now time for sports. And today I don't have Kwame Juma Juma here with me. I have Gary Al Smith. And it's the first time I'm having him on the show. And uh, Gary, Hello. As, we, as we do it. Yeah. Yep, man. yep, 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 yep. Good to have you. Soppy Wappy. <laughs> Why? Are you coming out with your new your track or something? You want oh, to... don't worry. I, t I take lessons from Awazimbi. <laughs> All right. So, um,. We've been talking, earlier on we are talking, I was speaking to, with uh, Benedict, Benedict yeah. about the All-Africa Games, about the Black Queens and what they're having to go through and all that. But over the weekend, I was actually monitoring you, speaking with the, um, with the Black minister. Queens, and the sportsmen say, so got the sportsmen minister on the line, and there was so much that was going on. But really, the, the guy believed that you actually set him up. And <laughs> you were making sure that the Black Queens were not going to go out of the hotel. Yeah. Okay. So, are you responsible for this whole thing? I am not responsible for anything. My, we just, you see, the negotiation processes had proven to be difficult. So, as media people, we just made the sports minister available. We made the ladies available, and we provided a platform for them to come. You were hoping that they would, they would reach some middle ground. Yes, yeah, a middle ground, and then they reached a middle ground, which was that the girls didn't agree. It's not really my fault, is it? Oh, too bad. Anyway, yeah. but there's more on the All Africa Games and yes. the, the, the uh, Golden Rackets, apparently. Yes, about yeah. the tennis team. Uh, they also had their issues, but they managed to win gold. And here's the funny thing there's a man who took care of sponsoring all their preparations apart from the government. So this man sponsors them, takes them to tournaments, organizes tennis opens for them in Ghana. And then when they go and win gold, when they come back, he rewards them again. Oh. That's so but nice. it's Ghana who, <laughs> who takes the glory. His name is Daniel Macaulay, and we'll be talking about him and the reward he gave to the Golden Rackets right, at the sure. weekend. So that's it for the sport. Um, my name is Gary Al Smith, and we begin with that story where McDan Shipping Limited rewarded the Golden Rackets with 24,000 Ghana cities for winning gold at the All Africa Games. Daniel Macaulay has been a staunch supporter of tennis in the country, and he's most famous for his yearly. Magdan Open Championships. Um, I want to congratulate the players who made it to the All-African um, All Games and also those who won the medals. Um, what can I do for them? I asked them to come and break bread with me this morning so that um, at least, if nothing at all, I can say thank you to them. Because well, they didn't let me down. I mean, they also showed that Whatever I'm contributing into Ghana tennis, they will support me to make sure it becomes successful. It's one thing me, con me helping. It's another thing they not pulling their weight. But at this particular point, they have proved to me that and they have given me more encouragement to support them and support them and keep supporting them. So right now what I want to do is those uh, who won the medals, the gold medal, I'm going to give them 6,000 each. I'm going to give them 6,000 each. Every team member who made it to Congo, I'm going to give them 2,000 each, including my sweet lady here. Oh, wow. <laughs> and including the coach. Yes. And including the coach. And I know that they are not going to let me down. I'm going to keep supporting them. This is opportunity for me to invite corporate Ghana. Right, so that'll be all for the bulletin. Before we go, a quick run through our top stories. One person has been confirmed dead in an illegal mine pit collapse. That is feared could have a lot more people buried. The police, citing intelligence, it says points to a series of coordinated attacks across the country have gone to the cause to stop the planned demonstration by the Let My Vote Count Alliance to push for the compilation of a new voters register. And that'll be all for the bulletin. My name is Israel Lai. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good night. This is
Joy News Prime.